Hey, hey, uh, welcome to the third event in a series of studio visits uh, focusing on some of the artists acquired within the extensive project Swedish Acquisitions 2021. My name is Asrin Haidari uh, and I'm a curator here at Moderna Museet uh, Stockholm and I've been working with uh, the exhibition uh, uh, titled Insights, uh, in which I'm standing uh, here uh, in Stockholm, uh, showing a selection of artworks uh, that we acquired uh, last year. Today, uh, we're going to visit the painter Mohamed Sami, uh, one of the artists now represented in our collection with two paintings. Uh, here's one of them, um, Joseph's coat. Uh, and we broadcast here uh, live on Instagram and you're very welcome to ask questions here and I will make sure to pass them on to uh, Mohammed. Uh, so I'm going to connect to him now. He's currently in uh, London in his uh, studio. Hey, everything worked. Great. It's Hello, Mohammed. Asrin, good to see you. How are you? Good to see you too. I'm very well. How are you? I'm brilliant. Doing very well. Thank you very much. Uh, you are in London now. You're sharing your time between Finnspong, Norrköping, uh, and London, where you have your studio. Uh, uh, can you show us? Where are you? Can you show us a of bit course. around? Of uh, course. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm everywhere. I'm, I'm in London. I'm in, in North Shopping. I'm in Finnspong. The, the world quite small. But before that, let me show you my dingy studio here. Yeah, please. Um, here it is. This is um, my studio in London. As you see, I work on several pieces. We're going to talk about this um, sooner or later, like why we work in, in several pieces. So this is unfinished pieces. And unfortunately, I don't have a lot of paintings because I moved most of them to my solo show in Stewart Shave Modern Art. So this is just a um, small, small insight about what's going on here. Um, nice. Um, this is the walls, it's important. The walls are very important to me because as you see, I don't, I don't use stretches. I just stable the paintings, the canvas directly on the wall, which is very, very important aspect of of the um, of the process here it is there's some um my my small trolley that's follow me everywhere which i found it um, it's important mm -hmm. also to pull behind me in addition yeah. this is my big palette my big palette what i mean is literally a big palette because i mix colors on the ground and then i have mm -hmm. my sharp knife palette which is also very very important um um, important tools in the studio, the knife palettes, and this is me. This is you. Yes. Nice to see a bit. Uh, nice to see. You. Uh, so, Mohammed, you studied uh, drawing and painting uh, in uh, the Institute of Fine Arts in Baghdad, right? Yes. And you cool. until two thousand four, two thousand five, and two thousand seven, you moved to Sweden. To Sweden. That's correct. Uh, yeah. And then 2015, you studied in Belfast and then um, Goldsmiths College. Uh, and now you have your first uh, major solo show. So this is why you say that you have just a few paintings. Most of them are uh, shipped to, to um, Art Modern. Yeah, that, that's correct. To, to, to see what shape modern art. Yes, um, mm. that's correct. It's very accurate information. Um, and um, yeah, I spent like... Um, most of my, my most of my life persuading information and knowledge about how to um uh, to develop the painting you know and 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 um but now i i spend quite a few years to reach this moment where you know to, to um to encounter my solo show at steward shape modern art um uh, so so yeah it's all, all, almost all the paintings there. Yeah, uh, but you, so uh, you work uh, uh, very, with very personal subjects, uh, autobiographical. Uh, yes. 
and uh, you focus on the condi conditions of remembering or maybe yeah. the burden of remembering um, mm. and your work kind of encourage you to uh, broaden your reflection on uh, on trauma and displacement and there's always a hint of violence yeah. do you want to say something about what you e are exploring in your work that's that's very good this is a very good question and I found it important because I don't have always um, the accessibility to the public to express it to myself. So that's why this is, today we have very good um, opportunity, a good platform to express ourselves directly to the public. Um, talking about trauma, remembering um, this is a major subject matter, it's mainstream narrative, almost many artists they work on it, and there's misunderstanding for what I'm working on. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working on a very specific aspect of, of memory, the one that is not called declarative memory, the one that's called episodic memory. Um, artistically, I call it like belated response memory, like when there is a gap, when there is a gap between you and between the incidents, there is some memories comes to invigilate you and um, involuntary. What I try to say is, as we mentioned, 2007, I left Iraq and I've witnessed some, some events and, and we don't want to be, you know, to talk about the events specifically. And, and uh, during the gap of growing, and I'm growing also, that's why a belated response memory, I found it the, the accurate definitions for, uh, for, for my work. Mm -hmm. um, surprisingly, also, it's, um, it's important to talk about like what what the people expect to see from me. You know, when you say Mohammed from Iraq, he he lived most of his life in Iraq. Of course, the people, um, the spectators, they're going to um, expect to see traumatic image, as you mentioned, like about trauma. But then um, the artworks um, allude the classifications about trauma. In addition, it shows something else. And, and that's why um, what, what, what the people mention about trauma and these stuff, I don't think this is accurate enough. Because yeah, in exactly, my... because it's more, mm. it's kind of fragments of memories, kind mm. of like you won't see any violence or um, uh, aggressiveness or war directly in your images. They, it's a lack of... Uh, human presence is kind of objects. It's mm. like claustrophobic domestic environments, interiors. Yeah. Uh, so, so it's like kind of uh, shifting the perspective a bit about what you see. Yeah. You know, um, I will, I will, I will try to make it simple as this. You know, like when you forget, usually, like when I say gap, like you forget, but then the oblivion, and then the the, the remembering harass the oblivion, and this is the paintings coming. What I mean, what I mean by that is when you say uh, like um, the, inter the internal spaces, the external spaces, and then also the garment, one of them, the painting behind you, Joseph Cote, do you see all of these metaphors and allegory? What happened here, a lack of a human being, of course, the lack of a human being is because the capacity of the painting as a practice you know, once you interpret the painting in the presence of a human being, then it means you stole um, uh, an, um, a photographic narration or cinematic narration, which the painting is not allowed anymore. What I try to say, the painting as a, pra as a practice, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, give us um, enough capacity to interpret it with, with all of these um, mainstream narrat narrations you know, the presence of a human being, or a few figures doing some job or explosion. That's why there's indirectness in the painting. The indirectness in the painting, it's, it's a very important aspect, which is, comes from the Arab literature, you know, mm. EU feminism. This is very important. Like, um, this is the only, this is the only, in my opinion, the only aspect that the painting it's allows you is the, to use the EU feminism allegory. And then the allegory and the EU feminism represented by the everyday objects, banals, internal and external spaces. Right, right. And, and maybe we can come into, like, to speak a little bit about this painting, uh, Joseph's coat from which you painted in 2020. 
yeah. and the title of that, how you work with titles. I mean, and also talk about what we see here is this bold blue color and it's mm. kind of a, a reverse side of a garment, right? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. You know, titles, um, uh, titles are very important elements in my work. In, in everywhere, you know, you can't, you can't imagine the title of Moonlight Sonata of Beethoven, Oops, I Did It Again. Could you imagine that? It's impossible. You know, Moonlight Sonata, it's to create this symphony. And that's why when you hear Moonlight Sonata, you will have some psychological, um, some psychological reaction when you hear it. That's why I try always to activate and to use the, the element of titles. So, and the titles always work the opposite of what you see. It's always the elusive signifier. It's push mm. you away for what you see. That's why it's very important to me that you remain uncertain when you look at the artwork. Mm. You will not remain with, with answers. So in my artwork, I create the questions which is much more difficult than making answers. You know, um, Joseph Coate, it's ongoing series and it's a metaphor of betrayal. So mm. once I paint this gentle touch of violence that's stretching, that you don't mm. know, I'm it's, gonna... yeah, the opposite, the opposite of, of a garment or maybe a pocket is being ripped off from somewhere else. You know, a Joseph coat is the coat of many colors, I think in the Bible, you know, so it's quite, you know, a religious story, but... Um, and in um, the Quran, right? In the Quran, of course, it's take, you know, it's, I mean, everyone knows Jews of Kuwait in Middle, in, in Middle East, especially our people, but surprisingly, even dictatorship is being used, Jews of the brother as a metaphor. So, for example, like Saddam Hussein, he used, he always accused the Gulf countries as Jews of brothers because he believes that they, they betrayal him with the, with the American, you know, soldiers to, to build some base. Of, um, of, of, of their military, yeah. So this is kind of uh, uh, deceit, loss uh, in, in, this, in this title. And so this is something like allegory and figure of speech is something that you come back to, right? In, in the titles. At uh, least, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so do you want to say something about the paintings you have in your studio? I know that you're oh. working on them, they're not <laughs> finished, but just to yeah. mention what you're working on. Yeah, yeah um, um, would you like to take a look at our glance before I- Yeah, go? please, please. Of course, uh, let me see how to turn this. Um, here we go. Can you see Great. it all? Yes. It's a quite a very large piece, you know, the toll of the painting is around 300 centimeters and 500 centimeters so do you see it's quite big and it's look like very ordinary landscape but then yeah and we, we have a question here we have also a question from a listener that uh, asks the big scale is that something that you always work with uh, big scale ambitious uh, big paintings or great so so shall we start answering these questions why it's big scale yeah start there and then we can <laughs> okay then great. The, the curious person asking can get very good. You know, you. Wh when I was very young, when I was in the um, in the middle school, you know, after the primary school, um, my I discovered I'm dyslexic. I don't have ability to math to pass the mathematic and English. And then the school offered me offer that to paint a mural to 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 glorify Saddam's regime, and in in in, in you know, uh, in exchange to pass these lessons. So since I was very young, I used to paint in Euro. Um, mm, right. And, and this is how it's, it's continued with me for a long time. But now I can, I can, I connect it with the context. Um, back to this painting for what you have seen now today. And it's quite uh, the green one. And the painting yeah, turn, is actually... Yeah, turn again so we, okay. we can see it. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. No worries. Do you see? Um, yeah. This painting, it's, as you see, it's, it's influenced. I mean, the colors, it's influenced by the night vision when the, on, on the, um, you know, the depictions of Baghdad when exposed to, to the U.S. attack in 2004. This is also something associated with, with belated response. I don't know why I remember this now 
Is it because when I look at the sky, I remember always that this always something comes with me. So um, the title of the painting, One Thousand Night and One Night. One thousand and one thousand night and one night. Someone else. <laughs> yes, it's an announcement here at the museum. That's good. Yeah. Right. We're closing in fifteen minutes here at the museum. That's good. Just one second, and I think we can continue. Yeah. It's good. It's good to have a part. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, one thousand, one thousand night and one night is it's a quite folklorian, folklorian Middle Eastern um, stories, and it's always um, and it's romantic or something like that. Um, it's quite very long definitions for these stories, but but then I do you want it, to go close to it so we can see kind of the. Uh, the textures, okay. Yes, the textures, because yeah. you can't, it's, it's so difficult to see here. It's yeah, very but, difficult, but of I just course, try, kind of... I just try to 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 escape to to not always to you know to not show it, but then you you get me back always. But that's why, as you see, um, do you see there's many layers and, and yes, um, it's very difficult to walk around. It's quite a very large painting. And do you do you work for a very long time on your paintings or? Yes, of course, it's it's take about like one month each painting maybe something like that it depends on the size it depends on the availability of the subject matter so yeah uh, and on, on, i'm usually work with uh, with the three four pieces together for example i showed again um working with these pieces and and in addition then i work with the other pieces which is part of uh, let me get the trolley away so you could see yeah. so you could see what what's happening here um so this is part of the series called the execution room. You know, it just shows tables, large tables and void. And this is indication for, you know, or reference for um, rooms, for dictatorship rooms and meeting rooms or something like that. And then, you know, it's about decisions is being made in these rooms. But then like, surprisingly, I jumped to the external aspect, which is, you know, uh, this is other, very other, you know, um, series that think the external spaces. And here it is some other painting that need to be painted soon. Mm. And, 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 but what's happening in the studio is like that. It's, it's what we have here. It's, it's a process of a growth, all the painting growing together. And that's why it's very important to me to, to work on them simultaneously. Right. And I mean, time is already running out. Uh, but uh, yeah. do you want to say something about, uh, I know that you have this big exhibition in London and you have another one in the in UK uh, uh, coming up next year at the that's Camden correct. Art Center, right? Yeah, that's correct. So that's, um, yeah. that's what's going on for you? Uh, that's what you're working towards? Um, I don't work towards anything. Um, uh, what I'm doing is I make painting following by exhibition, not exhibition following by painting. It's very important to know. And I don't work on any theme that's required for me because I can't ask myself to work on a specific theme since I use, uh, you know, uh, the belated response memory theme. Yeah. Right. So like you did this memories hidden. Uh, it's just like waiting for it to be triggered. And then Here we you, know, go. you don't know. Yeah. You don't know when that's going to happen. Yes. Yes. Sometimes yeah. I fasten the process by reading. I, I'm, I'm, I'm mostly relay on reading. Arab literature, mm -hmm. and this is how the figure of speech has always helped me to to find a subject matter, to find mm -hmm. um, something uh, hidden between the lines, and then from these small small things, of course, um, I invest larger things, and the things is just growing with me every year. Yeah, that's okay. But uh, uh, so I want to thank you very much for inviting us to your studio and sharing. Okay. Uh, your practice with us and uh, thank you uh, and uh, I wish you all the best uh, for <laughs> your upcoming you. work and uh, hope to see you here at the museum soon you haven't seen your work uh, of course. installed yet yeah so, we'll definitely uh, coming to see it <laughs> yeah thank you so much thank you Asreen we'll Wishing keep in touch everyone. yeah of course thank you very much have a lovely evening have a lovely evening bye bye bye